Hello everyone, my name is Benham. I'm a PhD candidate at Carnegie Mellon and Tepper School of Business. For the past few years, my work has been focused on explainability of AI algorithms and large language models. Just recently, I developed an algorithm to explain the outputs of large language models and the results shocked me. Um, but today I'm here to t talk a little bit about a recent project that I did, uh, more in collaboration with the PNC Bank and also some of the trends that I've noticed in uh, large language models. When people hear LLMs, they often think of ChatGPT, and for good reasons. It's the most accessible AI algorithm we've ever had. Um, right now, I'm asking it to explain or describe Deloitte, our sponsor today. Um, I think it did a good job. But a lot of businesses soon realize that ChatGPT alone is not enough to uh, basically provide benefits for them. So there was this new trend of retrieval augmented generation, or RAG, which a lot of you are familiar with, where you basically enrich the outputs of ChatGPT or any LLM that you use with the database of your own company. Um, in fact, I would argue that you don't want to use ChatGPT because of privacy reasons of your own data. Um, but so you, you have like financial documents, project reports, a lot of those things, and you want to reduce the hallucinations of ChatGPT or your favorite LLM and you basically empower that uh, with this database. Uh, this is a very hot topic these days. Uh, people call 2024 the year of RAG. Uh, I don't want to brag about it. This is, <laughs> um, this is all it is. But I would argue that the main benefit of large language models for businesses comes not in chatbots, but actually in a change of mindset. Uh, I tend to think of them as not just large language models, but lovely little minds. And it will become a little bit clearer when I uh, explain it. So basically, you want to think of them as like these pockets of intelligence that have captured some of the intelligence of humans. And instead of relying on just their language capabilities, now you want to rely on their intelligence. Um, this is a pretty um, hot topic too, agentic AI, where you basically have these software that requires some sort of intelligence to operate, and before, language models, we would have to do these things manually. Like if you wanted to write a project report, you would have to type it word by word in Microsoft Word. Um, if you wanted to do your taxes, you would have to find the patterns in your data and also enter those numbers in a calculator one by one. Also, if you wanted to do research on Google and see like what the entire internet says about some topic, you would have to do those things manually. Uh, not anymore, like you have to you have these language models that you can think of as just this uh, intelligence uh, pocket that you can throw at all of these software and they can do it for you. Nothing stops us from going beyond, like think of uh, orchestrated intelligence where you have a bunch of language models each excelling at specific tasks and then they're all being coordinated or orchestrated by a larger model like GPT-4 or hopefully GPT-5. Uh, OpenAI, if you can hear me, just drop it already. Um, and also, the future is actually going towards cooperative intelligence where you have a bunch of these models taking your requests, working on it. Each of them is, again, really good at some specific task. And then they come back to you and give you the results. This is why uh, some people like Andre Karapati um, argue that we're moving towards LLM operating systems uh, where the LLM is baked into your OS, like your MacBook or your mobile phone, and has access to all your data, and all you need is just ask it about what you want, and it will do all those things for you. So sort of like a central brain. But despite all this progress, language models also have some drawbacks. Um, there has been a lot of uh, research on how to make these models more logical, more rational, better at mathematic, mathematics and uh, rational reasoning. But they also lack some patterns of human behavior. And a part of my research is actually trying to reduce this uh, problem and basically allow these models to behave more and more like humans. Um, a, a very good application of these uh, kinds of uh, improvements would be in employee training. Um, for example, in a course at Carnegie Mellon, we did something where instead of like traditional case studies, the students would interact with the agents in the case study. We saw a lot of improvements in the students' performance. Um, I wanted to first talk about that, but then I realized why not talk about this other uh, project that basically implements some of those agentic AI things that I mentioned. 
Um, so we don't have internet here. That's fine. Uh, one of the things that I want to mention is that when you have um, agentic AI, you can basically simulate these other synthetic people, and then your employees would be able to interact with those. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the uh, link to the website here. Um, and because the, the language models are now empowered with some sorts of like human behavior, they can now detect better like when you're trying to fool them or like when you're trying to uh, sell them some sort of like offer that's actually a spam. So like they would actually hang up on you. This is a project that I did for the PNC Bank recently. And it's, uh, again, like I said, it's great for employee training where you want to just um, help your employees be able to close some certain kind of customers and be able to avoid some sorts of like red flags in the conversation. And you cannot experiment on real customers. You don't want to risk that. Um, but uh, you can do that with large language models that behave similar to humans. I would just like to leave you with this. Uh, even if the current AI progress uh, stops right now due to AI doomers, uh, I would argue that we still have enough AI for the next 10, 15 years. Um, my name is Benham. If you have any thoughts or comments, feel free to shoot me an email. Thank you.